Here is your latest African news. Your news highlights. Africa wide. Japan pledges 30 billion US dollars in African aid. South Africa. SA railway bosses arrested over corruption charges. Ghana. Lion kills a man who entered its enclosure in Ghana Zoo. Kenya. Raila Odinga confident about vote challenged court ruling. Nigeria. A Nigerian court has rejected a request to extradite a suspended police officer to the United States after he was implicated by a social media celebrity in a fraud case. Chad. Chad's national dialogue election of presidium members stormy. Diaspora. Black August uplifted as alternative Black History Month. Africa wide. Japan pledges 30 billion US dollars in African aid. The summit between Japan and Africa finished with a promise of 30 billion US dollars in investment in African aid. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida also promised to pressure for an African seat at the UN Security Council. The summit held in Tunis also served as a platform for business between Japan and the continent. Kishida said Japan would also pump 8.3 million US dollars into the Gold Ridge Liptako Gurma tri borders area between Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso that has been affected by extremist attacks in recent years. The UN Security Council is made up of 15 members, five of whom are permanent and have veto wielded power the United States, Russia, China, France, and Britain. The other 10 positions are filled by other countries for two years' stints, five of which are announced each year. South Africa SA Railway Bosses Arrested Over Corruption Charges The former top officials from South Africa's state-owned port and freight rail company Transnet have been arrested by elite police unit The Hoax for alleged corruption during former President Jacob Zuma's time in office. The high-profile arrest of Brian Molefe, who was the CEO, and Anoj Singh, who was the company's chief financial officer, were made early on August 29th. Both parties have been linked to a multi-million dollar fraud and corruption case in which a bribe was allegedly paid to an organization to buy more than a thousand trains. The accused who are currently appearing in court are facing charges of fraud, corruption and money laundering. It is alleged the controversial Gupta brothers who are yet to be extradited from the UAE received kickbacks from the deal. They have previously denied allegations of corruption. The arrest come after the Judicial Commission of Inquiry led by Chief Justice Raymond Zondo had incriminating evidence about how executives from various government-owned entities were involved in corruption. Ghana Lion kills a man who entered its enclosure in Ghana Zoo. A man has been killed by a lion in a zoo in Ghana's capital, Accra, after he broke into the feline enclosure, the government agency in charge of wild protection said. A statement issued by the chief executive of the Forestry Commission, John Alotti, under whose jurisdiction the Accra Zoo falls, said around 12 p.m. on August 28, 2022, officials of the Accra Zoo on a routine patrol noticed a middle-aged man, an intruder, had jumped the security fences and entered the lion's enclosure of the zoo. According to the commissioner, the intruder was attacked and injured by one of the lions. He was confirmed dead from his injuries and his body was taken to the morgue. The lion, the lioness and their two cubs were temporarily placed in a cage while the body was retrieved from their enclosure. The motive of the intruder is yet to be determined. The zoo has called the police to open up an investigation. Kenya Raila Odinga confident about vote challenged court ruling. Former Kenyan Prime Minister Raila Odinga says he is confident that the Supreme Court will grant his request to overturn the result of the August 9th election, which saw his rival William Ruto announced president elect citing solid evidence in the case. Mr. Odinga took 48.8% of the vote compared to Mr. Ruto's 50.5%, but Mr. Odinga does not accept these results. He added that the future of democracy in Africa was at stake, citing retrogression in some African countries. 
Odinga and his running mate Martha Karua on August 22nd filed a petition to the country's top court challenging the outcome of the August 9th election. In a recent press conference, Odinga reaffirmed his confidence in the Supreme Court ruling. Odinga said that he had proof that he had won the elections, which requires a candidate to receive 50% of the vote, plus one and once a recount. The 77-year-old politician lost his fifth bid for the presidency by a narrow margin of around 230,000 votes, less than two percentage points. Since 2002, no presidential election in Kenya has gone uncontested, with this year's outcome also causing a rift within the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, IEBC, which oversaw the poll. According to a copy of the 72-page petition, Odinga's team alleges that IEBC chairman Wafula Chebukati failed to tally around 140,000 votes. As a result, Ruto did not meet the constitutional threshold of 50% plus one of the valid votes cast, a requirement for him to be declared the winner. Judges now have less than a week to issue a ruling. If they order an annulment, a new vote must be held within 60 days. Nigeria a Nigerian court has rejected a request to extradite a suspended police officer to the United States after he was implicated by a social media celebrity in a fraud case. Deputy Police Commissioner Abakiari was suspended after he was implicated in the case of Nigerian social media influencer Raymond Abbas, known as Hash Papi, who pleaded guilty to money laundering and many other crimes in the United States. On August 30th, a federal court sitting in Abuja dismissed an extradition request filed by Nigeria's Attorney General Abubakar Malami after Kerry's indictment in the U.S. Judge Inyang Ekwo dismissed the application, calling it strange, incompetent and bereft of merit. Ekwo said that as the country's chief law officer, Malami ought to be aware that the Extradition Act forbids the surrendering of a defendant that is already facing trial before a competent court in the country. Kari has repeatedly denied any wrongdoing, but in February, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, arrested him for cocaine smuggling and belonging to an international drug syndicate. So, he is standing trial in Nigeria for an alleged link with drug barons. The FBI said last year that Hash Papi's crimes cost his victims almost 24 million US dollars in total. According to the FBI, citing court documents, Hash Papi confessed to paying Carrie a bribe for the arrest of a former associate. Carrie has denied the charges. Chad Chad's National Dialogue Election of Presidium Members Stormy The election in Chad of the members of the Presidium, the body in charge of leading the work of the Inclusive and Sovereign National Dialogue, DNIS, between the civilian and armed opposition and the military government, took place in a stormy atmosphere on August 28th. The head of the military government, Mahamat Idris Debi Idno, had kicked off this dialogue on August 20th in N'Djamena, boycotted by some armed groups and members of civil society. It is expected to lead to free and democratic elections and the transfer of power to civilians. More than 500 of the 1,400 dialogue delegates applied to join the 21-member presidium. They were nominated by members of the Organizing Committee for the Inclusive National Dialogue, CODNI. Gali Ngothe Gata, a presidential candidate in 2016, against the former head of state Idris Debi Itno, who ruled the country for 30 years, was elected to head the presidium. But when the composition of his body was announced, many delegates stood up and shouted in protest after some members accused the panel of not including enough Arabic speakers in the list. In a statement, several small political parties had threatened on August 27th to withdraw from the dialogue, denouncing maneuvers aimed at undermining the success of his dialogue so long awaited by the Chadian people. The work of the commissions, whose themes include social issues, peace, national reconciliation and fundamental freedoms, is due to begin on August 30th. The initial schedule calls for a closing ceremony on September 20th. Diaspora Black August uplifted as Alternative Black History Month 
To many, February is the month dedicated to celebrating black Americans' contributions to a country where they were once enslaved. But Black History Month has an alternative. It's called Black August. First celebrated in 1979, Black August was created to commemorate the famed Panther George Jackson's fight for black liberation. 51 years since his death, Black August is now a month-long awareness campaign and celebration dedicated to black freedom fighters, revolutionaries, radicals and political prisoners both living and deceased. The annual commemorations have been embraced by activists in the global Black Lives Matter movement, many of whom draw inspiration from freedom fighters like Jackson and his contemporaries. George Jackson was 18 when he was arrested for robbing a gas station in Los Angeles in 1960. He was convicted and given an intermediate sentence of one year to life and spent the next decade at California's Soledad and San Quentin prisons, much of it in solitary confinement. While, in, while incarcerated, Jackson began studying the words of revolutionary theoreticians such as Karl Marx and Vladimir Lenin, who advocated class awareness, challenging institutions and overturning capitalism through revolution. Founding leaders of the Panthers, including Huey P. Newt and Bobby Seale, were also inspired by Marx, Lenin and Chinese leader Mao Zedong. Jackson became a leader in the prisoner rights movement. His letters from prison to loved ones and supporters were compiled in the best-selling books Soledad Brother and Blood in My Eye. Inspired by his words and frustrated with his situation, George's younger brother Jonathan initiated a takeover at the Marine County Superior Court in California in 1970. He freed three inmates and held several courthouse staff hostage in an attempt to demand the release of his brother and two other inmates known as the Soledad brothers who were accused of killing a correctional officer. Jonathan was killed as he tried to escape, although it's disputed whether he was killed in a courtroom shootout or fatally shot while driving away with hostages. George was killed on August 21, 1971 during a prison uprising. Inmates in San Quentin prison began formally commemorating his death in 1979 and from there Black August was born. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, follow, share and like our video. It's the best way of supporting us and remember Africa is watching.